Good evening, everyone. I'm Tammy Fields. We are live right now, just about 15 minutes away from President Donald Trump's big announcement from the White House. He is set to announce his second Supreme Court justice pick since he's taken office. This pick would replace Supreme Court Justice Anthony Kennedy, a frequent swing vote. Kennedy, of course, retiring. Let's take a look at the four people believed to be on the president's short list this time around. They are all conservative contenders. Take a look. Brett Kavanaugh, 53-year-old Yale Law School graduate. Kavanaugh was part of the Kenneth Starr investigation into President Bill Clinton, staff secretary for George W. Bush administration as well, currently serving on the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals. There's also Raymond Kethledge, 51 years old, Michigan Law School, clerked for Justice Kennedy, strongly believes in the Second Amendment, is on the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals in Michigan. Amy Coney Barrett, 46 years old, Notre Dame Law School, raised eyebrows because she's Catholic, questioned very roughly on the precedent regarding Roe versus Wade, Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals in Indiana. Thomas Hardiman, Georgetown law runner, runner up to Neil Gorsuch, recommended by Trump's sister, President Trump's sister, who worked with him on the Third Circuit, ruled to protect gun rights, but has not spoken out on Roe versus Wade, Third Circuit Court in Philadelphia. I'm joined right now by Terry Day, a professor of Law at Barry University. Thank you so much for being here with us, Terry. We really appreciate it. I know you stay busy, so we appreciate you being a part of our coverage tonight. President Trump, what's his plan? Uh, what do you think of the, the four candidates that we've been looking at? What are your ideas of who he may choose? Well, I don't have a crystal ball. <laughs> okay. I don't think anybody does, but uh, I could talk about some pros and cons on Let's the, do it. On the uh, candidates. Also, there's another candidate that yes. has been discussed from time to time. He's also on the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals, and his name is Judge Thapar. Okay. So. His name, Amul Thapar, we don't know a lot about him. I think we may have an image of him, though. He might be a, a surprise to all of us tonight, and he could be chosen. Well, you know, President Trump has interviewed four people, and I've heard so, um, interchangeably whether the fourth is Judge Hardiman or Judge Thapar. Okay. So okay. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> this is a big decision. Tell us a little bit about the implications, because there are a lot of worry out there of course from Democrats who say whoever is chosen could roll back Roe versus Wade, affirmative action, marriage equality, the Affordable Care Act. So those implications are there. Uh, but also a lot of people saying, hey, these are all conservative contenders. This is exactly what we need to be on the court. Well, there's no question about it that anyone that President Trump chooses from this group of candidates is going to be very conservative. And conservative means that, uh, you know, judicial decision making is more textualist uh, looking at the text if it's you know the Constitution understanding the common under, uh, meaning of words as they were understood at the time the Constitution was written so uh, people with this kind of judicial philosophy would be less likely to rule in favor of unenumerated rights, privacy rights that really are implied in the Constitution but not within the text. Now Terry, with a Republican majority in the Senate, a Trump advisor really believes that any one of these four candidates could get pushed through, the four that we were talking yes. about initially. Yes. Let's listen to what he had to say. Okay. I think any of the nominees that the president's been considering right now uh, are confirmable in the Senate. That's what having a Republican majority is all about. And uh, the president made this a very, very important issue uh, in the presidential election, uh, more than any other presidential candidate. It was one of the major factors that got him elected and that got the Senate uh, in the GOP majority. So I, I think the path to confirmation for any of these final four uh, is, not, is not a problem. All right. Well, a lot of Republicans also believe the president's choice will get pushed on through, but there could be some mixed feelings during the confirmation process. Now, once he makes his pick, what will the next step look like? Well, there will be the confirmation hearings okay. then. So the Judiciary Committee will investigate the candidate. There will be hearings. So uh, the average um, 
length of the uh, hearings usually is three days, but it could take a long time in terms of the investigation. Okay. But many of these candidates have already been vetted. Okay. So I don't think that there's going to be a lot of uh, time to get all the information necessary to go forward with the hearings. Let's go back to uh, this landmark case from the 70s, Roe versus Wade. That seems to be a, a topic that everybody is talking about these days. The president's nominee could have a huge impact on that as well. One Republican that we keep really keeping an eye on is Maine Senator Susan Collins. Uh, she's considered a swing vote. We're just learning she will not be there uh, attending uh, the president's big announcement tonight at nine o'clock. Um, Collins is on record saying she will not support a nominee that's hostile to the landmark abortion ruling. Right. What are your thoughts? Well, I'd also like to mention that I think Senator Murkowski from Al Alaska also has concerns about that. So um, I doubt that any of the candidates, well, I, I'm pretty sure none of the candidates during the judicial hearings are going to commit to overruling Roe versus Wade. Uh, during these hearings, the candidates are very good at being um, evading those kinds <laughs> of questions because judges are supposed to be impartial. And if they commit to voting one way or another on a case that isn't before them yet, they they then lose their impartiality. And get in a bunch of trouble for that yeah, early on. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. We're also learning tonight, we were looking at the paperwork here uh, of just about 30 minutes or so ago. Uh, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo just signed in a new executive order. This is ahead of the president's decision tonight. He sent out a tweet saying, and I quote, here's my executive order to protect reproductive rights in New York and that the New York Senate needs to codify Roe versus Wade. It looks like Democrats are already kind of getting together and preparing for a nominee that won't favor their ideas. We, I know you've had an opportunity to look at this executive right. order. What are your thoughts on, on why he may have done this? Well, I, th I think states that are very pro procreative uh, pro creative choices and, and, you know, women's health issues are going to be on top of this. And, you know, states can provide more constitutional rights than the, than the Supreme Court. So the, the Supreme Court's decision on constitutional rights sets the floor on rights. Okay. States can provide more rights. So I think this is in anticipation of a justice who might be appointed who, uh, whether expressly or implicitly, would lead the court to weaken Roe versus Wade. Let's talk about some of the sheer numbers. We were just talking about Susan Collins, Murkowski. Um, we talk about how this could all end up. McCain, he won't be around mm -hmm. um, because of his health. Mm -hmm. How will it come down to once the confirmation hearings are over with and, and these senators have to make this decision on who they will say will be the next Supreme Court Justice? Right. Well, you know, based on Justice Gorsuch's confirmation, mm. uh, the, there only needs to be 51 votes okay. in favor of the candidate. And so if President Trump picks a candidate that Senators Collins and Murkowski are likely to support, then e even with um, uh, Senator McCain not there, it's still 50 votes. Gotcha. And if it's a tie, then Vice President uh, breaks the Pence tie. Would, yeah. would break the yeah. tie. Okay. So former White House Communications Director, of course he wasn't there for long, Anthony Scaramucci, uh, he doesn't believe abortion and equality are in danger. He really doesn't. He spoke with CNN just a little while ago. I want you to listen to his okay. sound and then tell me what you think. What's been grounded in the court, the Roe v. Wade decision and even the uh, marriage equality decision most recently, I think those two things are grounded now into the law of the United States. There are people in his base, there's pockets of people in his base that obviously would like to see that overturned. But I think if you look at the polling in the United States on that issue, it's 63 to 67 percent, depending on the date of the polling, that are for leaving it exactly the way it is. And so. Uh, Washington is still a political uh, group of people. Uh, the Supreme Court 
uh, fortunately or unfortunately has to take a barometric pressure reading of the society. And I don't think the thing gets overturned. But I hear you, and I'm sure there's people inside his base right now that'll be super upset with me for saying that. Although I did find uh, last weekend, this past weekend, many conservatives are saying more or less the same thing that I'm saying. Uh, after 46, uh, 45, 46 years of it being the law of the land, I think it's very unlikely for it to get reversed. And so it doesn't matter who the next pick is. Um, I think what is more at issue for the United States is what happens in labor regulation, what happens in business contract law, what happens in merger activity. Terry, do you agree? Yes, I, I do agree with that. Um, the only candidate uh, on the list that uh, perhaps may expressly vote to overturn Roe versus Wade is Judge Barrett. And that's based on some law review articles that she wrote. You know, she's been a law professor for a very long yes. time before she went on the court. But I, I don't think Chief Justice Roberts would join uh, four conservative, a block of four conservative, conservative justices to expressly overturn Roe versus Wade. I, I do believe that Chief Justice Roberts uh, recognizes it is settled law. Okay. That having been said, though, doesn't mean that women's reproductive rights are not in danger. Right. Uh, and I think it's in much more insidious ways. Um, for instance, um, there's a lot more pressure on uh, judges and the picks that um, President Trump uh, may, you know, ha has already identified or will identify would support this on religious liberty and freedom of conscience rights. And so that comes out in cases like Hobby Lobby, mm. where, uh, you know, a private company was exempted from having to follow the Affordable Care Care Act's mandate to provide contraceptives for their employees under their insurance at no cost to the employees. Well, since President Trump has taken office, the Health and Human Services has issued uh, interim rules basically saying that uh, entities or employers who provide insurance can, uh, as a matter of religious or moral reasons, exempt from that obligation. Mm. So I think that there's going to be other ways. Um, the other thing, if we think about pre, uh, how it was before Roe versus Wade, we're in a very different place than 1973. Contraceptives are, you know, available, the morning after pill, there's all kinds of other, you know, options that weren't available uh, pre-1973. But we might see that there are states put restrictions on protocol for the morning after pill. There may be um, more rights to people who have conscious, uh, con conscious uh, claims against um, prescribing morning after pill, like pharmacists mm -hmm. or nurses. So we're, we just we recently might saw see, a case yeah, about this. Yeah, we might see more of that. So okay. sort of the clash between uh, free exercise and conscience-based claims uh, by people who uh, feel that that if they have to comply with general uh, laws, that somehow they're facilitating something that uh, the person is morally or religiously uh, objects to. I know, Terry, that you care deeply about constitutional law, that you study it, you breathe it, you live it. This is a very exciting time, no matter whether you're a Republican or Democrat, exactly. or no matter what your political position is, because these justices wind up, once they're appointed, they normally are on for quite some time right. serving. Yeah. Oh, you were talking to me earlier about uh, just how many years most of them average-wise yeah. will be appointed, and it's a good amount of time. Yeah, well, I think the average is 19 years, wow. but some, uh, the longest of an associate justice was 36 years and seven months or something. <laughs> so uh, um, Justice Holmes did not retire until he was 90 years old. Wow. 
<laughs> so, y you know, it can be a very long time, and President Trump has said that is important to him in who he picks, that he wants, and all of the people in this pool are very young. Okay. So they all meet that. They all meet that criteria. Yeah. Now, I know that you have followed uh, constitutional law for some time. Have you ever seen a Supreme Court justice uh, appointment get so much attention? Literally, the president is doing this at a prime time hour. Uh, in, in just about a minute or so, 30 seconds or so, uh, we'll find out. Yeah. In the past, have these announcements been like this, where uh, it's been a big uh, reveal? Well, I think President Trump does big, you know. <laughs> yes. And it, Justice Gorsuch's reveal was like this. That's true. I, I think this is uh, more momentous because it's his second pick. Mm. And, you know, we don't know whether or not he'll have more picks uh, based on the future and uh, the health of some of the justices that the liberal justices who are, you know, up there in years. Well, we know, uh, again, at 9 o'clock, uh, the president, President Trump, is due to step up to this podium, as you can see here in this double box here. He will step up to this podium here at the White House, and he'll make that announcement. And uh, the last time we saw him do this, uh, his nominee was there with him. So we were expecting that mm -hmm. this person, whether it's a he or she, will be here, too, and we'll get an opportunity to see them. Uh, it looks like a packed room full of reporters. Um, here, the White House press corps, as a reporter that you're seeing there in front, but it seems as if that announcement co could come at any m moment. Do you think there's a possibility that the uh, president could surprise all of us and it could completely be someone <laughs> that we're not expecting, <laughs> that we have not studied and uh, kind of done our homework on? I hope not, <laughs> but uh, I don't think so. I, I, he has good advisors, and I think, like he picked Justice Gorsuch, he'll follow his advisors. He'll follow his advisors. Yeah. Well, this is always exciting exciting when you have an opportunity to witness this history in the making, um, whoever that candidate will be. Is there a lot of uh, excitement about the possibility that there could be a, a female justice uh, who could be announced tonight? Well, that would be Justice, uh, I'm sorry, Judge, she's not Justice <laughs> not yet, yet. <laughs> Judge Barrett. Yes. Uh, and so she, as far as we know, she's the only woman in the pool of possibilities as, well, as we know now. Right. but. Um, uh, people are tight there she, her picture yes. is up there yeah she's young at uh, I believe 46 years 46. old she's the youngest yes, she's the youngest and uh, she was recently confirmed uh, she was uh, nominated by President Trump and confirmed for the set uh, the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals all right here's listen. the president oh. let's listen he's walking yeah. up to the podium tonight it is my honor and privilege to announce that I will nominate Judge Brett Kavanaugh to the United States Supreme Court. His pick for the next Supreme Court Justice, 53-year-old conservative judge Brett Kavanaugh. He is seeking to shift the balance of the court further to the right. His wife, his two daughters, uh, his parents were all there at the White House in the East Room for this big announcement. Uh, we're very happy uh, that we were able to bring this to you live right now. Uh, Terry Day is here with us again to talk a little bit about uh, your feelings about all of this. She's a law professor at Barry University, if you're just joining us. Uh, what do you think? Well, of all the possible candidates, he's really the best qualified. He's got impeccable credentials. Ivy League, Yale Law School, Yale, Yale College. What's so fascinating and probably meaningful for him is that he was a law clerk for Justice Kennedy mm -hmm. and now he's taking Justice Following Kennedy. In his footsteps. Yeah. And it's also interesting that he was a law clerk for Justice Kennedy the same term that Justice Gorsuch was. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And, and I thought his remarks were uh, very measured, very appropriate. Uh, he talked about uh, believing in the rule of law, being independent and impartial, uh, 
each case on its own. Uh, he talked about being Catholic, but talked about Catholics disagree among many things. Mm -hmm. uh, that may be, you know, code for I'm not going to <laughs> overrule Roe versus Wade. Um. I have to tell you, I was struck by the fact that he talked so much about his background. You really had an opportunity to see him as a person and how he was brought up. He talked about uh, his mother and his father and how his mother was such a trailblazer teaching at a predominantly African-American uh, school and then how she went back to school to earn her law degree yeah. and became one of the first uh, female prosecutors and I can remember him saying something about she would practice on me at the dinner table <laughs> um, 53 years old conservative uh, judge a really fascinating look at not only uh, his mother and his father and their law background but even his yes. and his two daughters and yes. seeing how he coached and how they call him Coach K just really put a personal touch yeah. on who uh, this person is who if confirmed if confirmed he will be the next Supreme Court Justice I think we have a statement from Senator Bill Nelson that I'd like to pull up and let you all have an idea of what he had to say tonight as he reacts to this uh, information uh, if we can pull that statement up with uh, the senator uh, you can see it here from Senator Bill Nelson and I quote I look forward to meeting with the president's nominee in the coming weeks to discuss his views on several important issues such as protecting women's rights, guaranteeing access to health care for those with pre-existing conditions, and protecting the right to vote, just to name a few. I will make my decision after that. So you can see right there Democratic um, Senator Bill Nelson uh, saying these are some top concerns for him. He will make his decision after he finds out more about where uh, Judge Kavanaugh stands uh, on those issues uh, in particular. Mm -hmm. And this is to be expected. Yes, absolutely. I mean, the senators need to do their due diligence, yes. and, uh, and they will. They, they <laughs> have a constitutional part in sitting a new Supreme Court justice through the confirmation process. So it's very important. Now, this is very likely that um, these confirmation hearings, which are always um, typically very spirited um, and sometimes heated, you'll get an opportunity to, to hear uh, from the nominee at that time. But most of the time, it appears, at least from Gorsuch, that they won't talk very specific about um, cases and mm -hmm. how they may rule, but they'll mm -hmm. be very careful with that. They'll go and pretty much say, hey, I'm going to follow the law, depending on the case that's in front of me. Is that typical? In what you'd yes, see. Uh, judges have judicial canons and they're supposed to be impartial. And if they commit to how they are going to rule about a case that hasn't yet come before them, uh, you know, that means that they can't be impartial. It's also interesting to note that in my research, I came across the fact that during uh, Judge uh, Kavanaugh's confirmation hearing for the D.C. Circuit, he was asked about Roe versus Wade, mm. and he said he sees that as settled law. All right. Then that will put a, a lot of the controversy, so many people thinking about the possibility that Roe versus Wade could be overturned uh, with this pick, that could put a lot of that uh, to rest. But as you were telling me earlier, there are lots of other cases, yeah. though, yeah. Um, where they're, they're um, really important um, situations that people care deeply about yeah. um, that could still come up. One of the interesting on. things about uh, Judge Kavanaugh, he worked with independent counsel Kenneth Starr. Oh. And uh, his, he's written in a law review article that based on his experience working on with the independent counsel, that he thinks sitting judges should not be uh, under criminal investigation or have to answer for civil suits when they're in hmm. office. Now that's important because uh, there's plenty of pending litigation against uh, President Trump mm -hmm. and the independent counsel Mueller's investigation continues and some of this might come before the U.S. Supreme Court. So it's interesting to see that he might uh, support, you know, the independence of the executive very strongly. Very important to talk mm -hmm. about that. Thank mm -hmm. you. I know that we have uh, some information coming in right now from a former presidential uh, candidate and former governor uh, of 
of our state, Jeb Bush. So let's look at that quote. Excellent choice for SCOTUS. Judge Kavanaugh will be a strong defender of the Constitution. So as you can see, uh, many uh, folks tonight weighing in on this decision. And not only will people be talking about that throughout the evening, but in the days to come as we go through all the confirmation hearings uh, regarding this uh, Supreme Court Justice nominee. Uh, again, if you were just joining us, it's Brett Kavanaugh, 53-year-old Yale Law School graduate. We learned a lot more about him and his background today, and no doubt we will continue to follow this uh, developing story tonight. Stay with us. We have much more ahead for you on Spectrum News 13. Again, you've just heard who the president has chosen as his next Supreme Court justice pick. Stay with us, everyone.